Welcome to The Shooting Show, brought to you this week from Johannesburg. We're at Huntex 2013, a full report next week. First, we're out hunting ostrich and blessbok with Mugava safaris and we go to Sky to chase foxes with Scott McKenzie. After hunting red deer on Skye with Scott, Byron Pace is back on the island to help track down Scott's Fulpine nemesis. Yeah, as well as me being the gamekeeper stalker to Ellen Nierman, uh, I'm employed uh, to cover roughly about 10,000 acres on the north end of the island, purely just for fox control. They start out in the truck to one of the few places that can be accessed by a vehicle. Yeah, they've always been here. They've always been a problem. They do do a lot of damage come lambing time. It's an ongoing battle with them. Lamping as they go, Scott spots a pair of eyes in a field and brings out the call. <coughs> this fox is cautious and bids a swift retreat. This bit's not actually part of my grain, as we come to this cattle grid. That's my grain from there on, then. Okay. All the way across. I might be interested with that coal you've got as well. Mm. Just to see. Just to see if they don't react to the squall that I've got. If they react to one of the uh, vixen or dog cries. Yeah. They continue lamping and are eventually rewarded by another fox sighting. Parting company from the vehicle, they head out on foot. Staying quiet while seeking out a fox is no mean feat. Hunting foxes on sky is a labour intensive affair, as very little ground can be covered from the road. We're just going to move forward as best we can. Scott works the lamp. and tries to call a fox in. It lingers in the field but seems hesitant. Scott and Byron watch yet another fox disappear into the darkness. Well, there was a, a fox which I believe to be a vixen. Uh, she was just the other side of the river there. Uh, it's a fox that I've picked up before in the last few weeks. She's not lamb shy, but uh, she's um, she's non-committal to coming in. She hung around for a while, uh, but then she just started to make her way off across the moor. We have a natural barrier between us, the river, and it's just not worth trying to hike out across in the, in the dark after her. Uh, we'll pick her up again soon enough. Scott heads to a coastal region to call across a tract of land that he saw foxes on a few days before. This was made for me by a good friend in California of Varmans Inc. Um, he sent me this over just before I was uh, to go to Arizona to give it a try on the, on the coyotes. And I found that the foxes just find it irresistible. It's not pitch perfect. Too many calls are too pitch perfect. And as we know, nothing in nature is. He switches between using his palm and a call. The hard work pays off as two foxes suddenly appear. Time is of the essence for Scott and Byron. They're losing light with the battery in the lamp beginning to run low. Scott will have to get a shot off soon. One fox seems to be in pursuit of the other. Scott prepares his rifle to take a shot, but Charlie just won't hold still. It lingers in the field but seems hesitant. 
Scott watches the fox's movement. He waits for a clear shot to present itself. Thanks to his experience with foxes on the Isle of Skye, Scott knew exactly where the pair would reappear. Squeaking again finally gives Scott the chance he's been waiting for. And one of the foxes falls to the Kimber Montana 243. Scott makes a play for the other fox, but it makes a swift exit. We picked up uh, a pair, dog chasing a vixen, non-committal. So they were just going around in their business. She was getting very angry with him. He was chasing her about. So I decided to uh, take us around to a point where we maybe get a chance to cut them off. It was worth a try, last ditch attempt. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, we managed to pick them out when we got onto a high piece of ground. At that point, we, I didn't think they were going to come in. They were just messing about in the reeds and the rushes. Just the luck was on our side, and the dog fox pushed the vixen towards us, and they came within shootable distance. We've searched high and low for this fox. We know it's down, watched it go down in the scope, and uh, we know it's, uh, know it's down somewhere. So we're, perhaps we'll come back in the morning with the dog and see if we can find it then in the daylight. Well, let's hope tomorrow Definitely. Uh, brings a fox. <laughs> Early the next morning, Scott and Byron head out into Skye's impressive wilds once again. They're eager to find the fox they worked so hard for. Scott's dog soon locks onto the target. Inspecting his quarry, Scott checks his shot placement. It's a big fox. Yeah, see the spine. Vixen. Big vixen, that is. That is. Glad to have removed one more predator from his sensitive island habitat and relieved to have found the dead fox, the trio set off home after a job well done. Fox in the skyway there, and now? The Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Peter Wilson struck gold on his competitive return at the ISSF World Cup in the United Arab Emirates. The Olympic gold medalist had trained for just two weeks and had not shot the new double truck formats before, but that did not affect him as he stormed to gold, dropping just one of 60 targets in the final. Wilson is joined by Aaron Hedding, who took gold in the men's trap, having only qualified for the finals after a seven-way shoot-off. The new ISSF formats are clearly working in British athletes' favour so far. Full report in the next issue of Clay Shooting, out next week. The Forestry Commission has called for boar culls in areas of high populations, such as the Forest of Dean. After conducting a survey, the Commission concluded that there were nearly 600 boar in the forest and said culling up to a third of the population would be justified. There is no closed season on wild boar, though the Commission only advocated culling from September to January. For more boar news, don't miss Sporting Rifle magazine. Air gunners have produced an overwhelming display of opposition to the Scottish air gun consultation. That's what the latest news from Holyrood indicates. The government has had to delay publication of the responses to the consultation, simply because it received so many. Responses to the consultation, which could see air guns put under licence in Scotland, were due to be published 10 days ago, but the government was unable to meet this deadline owing to sheer volume. We'll have all the news in Airgun Shooter magazine. Sporting Rifle magazine continues to go from strength to strength. A new African edition of the popular shooting title was unveiled at the Huntex show, Johannesburg, this past weekend. The new bi-monthly journal aimed at South African sport hunters saw intense interest during the four-day show. The 16th British Side-by-Side -side Championships will take place on the 29th of June at Sporting Targets in Bedfordshire. Advance booking costs £45 and top prizes include a 70 brace driven grouse day, an Alan Payne tweed coat and gin. Basque is sponsoring the event. Visit basque.org.uk for more information. And finally, 
A USA survey says public approval of hunting is at its highest in 18 years. 79% of the American public was in favour of the shooting sports, up 5% from the previous years, according to independent research. Shooting participation is also on the increase, up 18% since 2009. That was the Shooting Show News. The Sport and Rifle team returns to Africa and stalking outfitter Paul Childerley is the man behind the rifle. Okay. First up, it's a trip to test zero. Paul's packing a heavy calibre to deal with even the biggest planes game. He soon proves his worth as a rifleman with some steady shooting, clean through the target. But the real challenges are yet to come. Zero incomplete, Paul and his PH, Patrick De Beer and trackers head out to the heart of the game reserve. They'll be stalking on foot amid the bushveld. This is classic African hunting. The hunting reserve is packed with fauna, from small antelope to the big five. But first on the list today is a different kind of quarry, ostrich. Ostriches are not often thought of as a trophy species and are usually hunted as interesting incidentals but Paul, as a pheasant keeper, is keen to secure one of the big birds. Before he knows it, Paul is into a group with a suitable old male and the shot is on. The shot looks good but the ostrich absorbs the bullet and runs on. The only sign of a hit was a slight hunching as the bird sped off. Ostriches are not as big as they first seem as large parts of them are nothing but feathers. Paul is keen to ensure his shot was true and happily the ostrich drops off camera. Well done Paul. Excellent hunt. Perfect, thank you Excellent very much. Excellent shot placement. Beautiful ostrich male. You can't get better. This was an excellent hunt. You thank couldn't Patrick. do better. Perfect shot placement. Right on the knob where I told you to aim. Yeah. You took this shot over 200 meters, which is magnificent for a pitch black animal. Yeah. There's no contours in your scope. The stalk was just excellent. No, very good. Straight through the lungs, straight through the heart. It ran about 10 meters and he just dropped in his tracks. How do you feel about this hunt? Amazing. How, how old would this male be? I pitched it at about 7 years, 8 yeah. years. Very old male. Yeah. You can see it's pitch black. Some yeah. nice battle scars on it. Yeah. I think I'm going to have the drumstick. <laughs> <laughs> Turkey burgers all around, I think. Well done. Thanks a lot. No, much appreciated. Thank you. There's just time for a few photos to complete a short but successful hunt. But Paul's day isn't over. The team stalks on, now turning its attention to a popular African antelope, the blesbok. A medium-sized animal, the blesbok is certainly a distinctive looker, but none have shown themselves so far, only some wary buffalo and tame rhino. For all Paul's stalking prowess, he doesn't seem too keen to get near the dangerous game. At last, the blesbok make an appearance. There's a decent herd but it's on the move and Paul and Patrick are faced with a protracted stalk. As the day progresses the team catch up with a suitable beast. It's an old male and perfect for culling. Just as Paul fits to the rifle the ram turns to face the pair. The chest shot is still just about on but it's not easy. Paul however is confident in his abilities. The herd scatters and momentarily confusion reigns, but crucially the shot was a good one. Right boys, That's perfect. that was a perfect kill shot on camera. He went forward and ran, just dropped just inside the camera. Paul and Patrick can now approach the carcass and inspect the old ram. Despite the pressure and difficulty, Paul's shot was perfectly placed. Paul, as you can see, it already started wearing off on the tips. Yeah. And it's very white in the front there as well. Yeah. I'd say this is a, a good nine years old. Nine years old. No, yeah. Eight years, yeah, nine years. Really? And uh, it's quite big ridges in here, aren't there? That's it. Yeah. Over, over time, as it oldens, um, the ridges just becomes flat. Really? And it gets whiter over time. Is that where they're wearing them on the on the scrub and stuff? That's right? it. Yeah. yeah. One day, two species. That's not a bad result for the big man from Bedfordshire. All that's left is to drag the carcass back to the vehicle where they find a few inspected visitors. There's Mr Childerley, Werbun's answer to a ninja, scared stiff of a few tame rhino. 
Eventually, the rhino head off, and so do we, but we'll be back in Africa soon. That's it for this week, thanks for watching. We're out every Monday, 7.30pm UK time. This is The Shooting Show. <laughs>